The apartment is nestled within Madrid Old Town, in the Barrio Las Letras neighborhood. We like that it was an old building and that the apartment had a lot of flexibility and light. For us, to have a lot of natural light was one of our main requirements. Also, it had to be flexible and adapt to our chaotic lives. The apartment was intended to be solely our own residence, but it has become our office as well. My name is Patricia Carrasco. And I'm Ricardo Mancho. We are architects and founders of Trama, a small architectural office based in Madrid and Canary Islands. We are also the owners of this apartment. The neighborhood consists mostly of pedestrian streets lined with three to five story residential buildings. It is a neighborhood that is highly urban and open to tourism, but it still retains the sense of being a small town. This building dates back to the 1860s. It's a typical corrala found in Madrid. Corralas are small housing units arranged around a communal patio. Historically, some of them were even used as public theaters around the city. We stumbled upon this place while looking for a house for one of our clients. He rejected it, but for us, as soon as we saw this place, we felt like this would be our home. There was a large dining and living room with three balconies. The kitchen was in the corner of the apartment. Next to it was the bathroom and the bedroom. The first thing we did was to remove as many walls as we could. The bathroom was moved to the old kitchen. We placed the kitchen into the open living and dining area. The bedroom stayed in the same location. You enter the apartment through the original door. There is a cabinet with some books and art. The cabinets are made up of three double IKEA storage units and one single unit. The single unit also doubles as a seat when put it on shoes. There is a narrow corridor with a big mirror on one side, which makes you feel like you are in a bigger space. The end of the corridor splits into the living area and the bedroom. The living room is a large open area that is shared with the dining and kitchen. Above the sofa, we added some floating shelves. It allows us to store books and plants without taking up additional floor space. We made most of the pots for the interior plants using concrete and other cement-like materials that are left over from work sites. The construction materials that we have around the living area are pieces that we find from our projects. For example, the coffee table was a piece of marble we found from our work site. We added some recycled legs and it has been a great table for the living room. We like the Sedif TV because when we have a yoga sessions it's very easy to move it and put it in the bedroom. The kitchen is at the end of the open living area. A mirror splashback adds interesting views and reflections to the kitchen. We added open shelving above the counter space because we wanted to show our beautiful plates and glasses. It also makes it easier to find the things you need. The cabinets and doors are finished with oak and are from IKEA. We integrated the fridge and dishwasher to keep the space looking clean. The thin countertop is porcelanic by Decton. Ricardo hates lighting from the ceiling as they are often quite boring and cold. So we use IKEA balls to make them more cozy and interesting. For the lighting, we added a Nemos Le Corbusier lamp on the wall. The apartment was intended to be solely our own residence, but it has become our office as well. Our idea was to design a place that reflects our simple and creative lifestyle in a bright, calm and flexible space. During the week, there are four to five people working here. The three balconies bring in a lot of light. We have turned them into our small urban garden. For the balcony in the middle, we added a small table 
to have a coffee in the morning. The balconies have curtains on the outside to protect the house and the plants from the summer sun. Because there is a gap between the curtains, it still has good airflow and light can still come through. The wall between the kitchen and bathroom has a large window. It lets the light pass through and makes the space feel brighter. There is a curtain that starts from the dressing space and moves through the bedroom. It isolates the most intimate area of the apartment so you can have a shower or change your clothes in privacy. We originally planned to add a door in the bedroom, but in the end, while we were designing the space, we realized that we liked the circular flow. The dressing area has a large floor to set in wardrobe. It contains more of our clothes and household items, as well as the washing machine. The bathroom cabin contains both the toilet and the shower. The shower heads can be turned on at the same time to allow two people to use the shower simultaneously. It has a large glass panel that allows natural light to come in. Instead of hiding the sink, we decided to turn it into a feature in this area of the apartment. We are doing this to improve the spaciousness of the house. Behind the sink, we added a wall of artisanal ceramic tiles. On the side, we have space to store everyday items. The sleeping area can be accessed from the entrance corridor and from the living area. Originally, there was a part of the ceiling which had a storage space. We didn't need it all, so we decided to remove most of it to make the bedroom more spacious. There is a bed lamp hanging from the top of the wall. The cabinets are arranged in the room to make the most of the available space. They are from IKEA, but since they are visible from all sides, we decided to customize the front with oak lines, which is a material very present in the house. The bed can lift up for extra storage. The floor we choose, it's made of natural rubber. The blue part of the floor, it was a mistake. In, we originally planned to have white finish throughout the apartment, but there was an issue during the construction and we couldn't access to more white floor. So we then decided to create a triangle shape that plays with the angle the kitchen already had. It turned out quite well. The best way to face a small space, uh, we think that it's to open it, to remove as many walls as possible, so every, every meter counts as a bigger space. We think that it was worth sacrificing some privacy in order to have better light and more space. The biggest win of living in a city is the density it offers. We are always close to the market, the art galleries, our friends, and we are always excited to explore the city. Thanks for watching. And if you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com slash submissions.